right. This Iowa hunter coming at you from a rock B again. This is the part they usually don't show you in hunting videos. A lot of work. I got a little bit of grass coming up in here. Slayed it once this year early. This clover pot is doing extremely good. Clover chicory. And now some alfalfa, but it's getting really tall. Matter of fact, I should mow it. But there's a lot of work involved in getting everything ready and planted. The power plants are coming up a little around the outside. I had to put this whole crossing in last year. Just got the tire change on this Kubota. Went flat and then came off the rim coming up this crossing. Blood, sweat, and tears. Whatever you put into your land is what you'll get back out of it. I started putting some riprap down here, but <clears throat> this ain't nothing. That'll just act as a French drain once I throw the rock in there. But there's belly dumpers of concrete in the bottom of this thing. It's really solid. But what I want to show you this year was Man, if it held up this year, anything will happen. I got trees all over my ground. Clover up on the edge of these fields. That I rooted down three feet. I don't know if you can see the roots on some of them plants, how deep they are. Down in there. And on top of that tree, that's all just caved away and gave way in this rain. If I put a crossing in like this, the water's coming toward you this way. What you don't want to do is short yourself on this edge right here where the water comes into this edge. All the dirt from the crossing come up into this edge and that's full of concrete too and then packed with dirt because this is right where the water would want to cut through. And if you could have put a crossing in, the next thing you know, your neighbor's wondering why the river's running across the bottom field because you changed the direction of it. <clears throat> so you want to be careful with that, but this has worked out real well for me. Unfortunately, I got a second crossing back there that's just a small one with the culvert in it. And I went back there and that thing's eight feet deep. So I'm not getting across that today. But I'm going to go back in there and check out some of them food plots that are way back in there and we'll be back with you here in a minute. Yeah, I'm back. <clears throat> oh, 20 acres or so on my property. And up that front food plot I did this too and I don't know if you can see it. It hasn't worked out the greatest because of the dampness, but see all that green? That's like an Egyptian wheat. Actually, it's supposed to be better than Egyptian wheat. It's called green screen. And I planted that to help keep the deer uh, feel more safe in this real thicket area between me and the property line. Also, on the uh, edge of my food plot over there against the fence, it's supposed to grow 14 feet tall. I ran it clear up to the top of the hill, kind of seal off that whole area. Ran it clear down here up to the crevasse. This is what's going on with a lot of water here in Iowa. We got such a tremendous amount of water. I got a small crossing there with the culvert. But this was the big crossing for the tractor. And I come down here after so much rain. Now and animals took advantage of it. But uh, this is what's happened. There was a tube down there. This is what they call it, a falls area where that sucker's over eight feet deep. Look how thick that is to get down in that ditch. And then when you get up on this side, it's not really quite as deep. You can't even see the daggone ditch, it's so thick, but you know, it's only, oh, probably not five foot deep, I'd say. And this area, big enough for a deer or a person, but I ain't gonna fit the Kubota across here. That culvert held up. But it's getting ate out too. I'm gonna have to get back in here and dig this whole thing out and I'm gonna put a 24 inch culvert, you know, eight or 10 feet long in here. <clears throat> but all along this goes down into feeds into several other big ditches. It's taken some of them ditches back eight feet this year to 
had tremendous root growth in them. <clears throat> but we're gonna head up to the top 40 and 50, see what we got going on up there. The rest of it's on foot. All right, here we are and up toward the back 50 at the Rock and Beer. Whatever, it's been just about 30 days. It's the 12th of June, it's the 12th of May when I planted most of this stuff. When you look at it from a distance, it looks like it's thick. I suppose some of it's thicker than others. <clears throat> like I said, we've had a terrible, terrible time this year. Farmers planted fields that didn't even grow. This is all Whitetail Institute clover. In the lower area down there. It's gone. It's not going as good as this upper area. Some of this stuff has gotten bigger. I think we're doing all right. I mean, heck, we're only 30 days. I'll probably come back in here and throw a seed out over what I think is a spot that didn't get it very well, but to me, it don't look too bad. <clears throat> and then right from that bottleneck there where it opens up, there's a strip of power plant supposedly across the middle there, just from the right, left, left, right. And then that whole hillside I see is uh, a few weeds popped up on there, but that should be all alpha rack, which is uh, white tail institute clover, chicory, and uh, alfalfa. And around the outside edge, right in there, all the way around, and around that center island. And over here is a strip of power plant. And that's what you're seeing right here. Some of that power plant with the sun hemp and sunflowers and climbing peas for a buffer strip around there. Get up a little farther here and see what it looks like. All right. We're still up in my top field. It looks like the alpha rack's doing pretty good. I do have some weeds growing up in here. <clears throat> but one month in. It's got a nice little carpet. I'm sure even though it's short, the deer's probably feeding on it already. I'm going to go up here to my Wild Game Innovations 360 and pull the card out as I go by.